Well, today, as I said, it's a historic day for us. Uh, a day where I'm appealing uh, the coach of the senior national team. If we could remember, uh, for the first two and a half months, after the expiration of our contract with the last Super Eagles coach, Coach Vasero, uh, we had been looking around Nigeria, we are glamouring for the new coach for the Super Eagles. Uh, thank God we listened to the yearning of Nigerians, that uh, the popular view was we need an indigenous coach. And then we listened to it, and then we tried to make sure that we do what Nigerians want. And that's why we mandated the technical committee to sit down and look at the available number of Nigerians that apply, applied for the job of the head coach of the Super Eagles. It may interest you to know the number of foreign interested candidates that apply for the post at, outweighed the number of the indigenous coaches, even times 10, if not, if not more than times 10. But uh, as I have said earlier, we have to listen to the yearning of Nigerians. They said they need an indigenous coach, and that was the mandate we gave to the Technical and Development Committee to look at the available candidates we have and then try and make sure they do the needful and they do the right thing and give Nigerians the best. It is not only time you find the Minister of Sports Development in attendance, but the unveiling of the senior national team coach for football, the only Minister of Sports has to be in attendance. Without that this will be about the first time in several, several years ago where the senior national team football coach is unveiled in a formal ceremony of this nature. And I need to thank and praise the leadership of the NFF for making this to happen. <laughs> Let me also say and underscore the boldness in appointing an indigenous coach for the you know, super eagles. As an individual, I've always recounted to people and I said, each time Nigeria takes part in AFCOM, any country I find an indigenous coach sitting in their bench, I always remain very proud. And I'm glad that we have an opportunity today to have a Nigerian coach, Coach Philip George, as senior men's national team coach. So I thank you know, the initiative that has brought this to happen. And you can see the twist of history. Several years ago, as a university student in the University of Calabar, every Saturday, I would go to the UJSUNA Stadium to watch Calabar Rovers play, and therefore to watch Pinini George play as a player of the Rovers of Calabar. Today I find myself sitting here and watching his own villain as the coach of the Super Eagles. That's quite tremendous. And I'm glad that the football community in Nigeria received the appointment of him in George quite joyously. I'm glad at the level of calmness that greeted the appointment of Philip in George. When you take a good decision, you find the reaction very calm. In spite of the kind of things that were thrown up in the media, I think the announcement, a decision had to be taken. And I'm glad that that decision was well received. 
I find, and I need to join the president to also make this clarion call, that Finney the judge requires the support and the cooperation of everyone. If you love Nigeria and you love Nigerian football, you must love and support the choice of Finney the judge. So, um, there's no perfect playing style, you know, but uh, we we'll try and um, have a formation where the players are going to be comfortable in that. You know, we have a lot of attacking players in Europe. They are doing so well, um, but we must have that balance as well. You know, while attacking, we must have the balance uh, for not allowing the opponent to 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 have a chance. You know? So that's we we'll look at it and see um, how we we'll get it right. You know, so um, there's no perfect uh, formation. We must uh, occupy the wings. We must have attacking players. Uh, there must be an attacker, there must, we must try to control the midfield, so um, we must have a, a, a back four. Um, uh, we must have, you know, in football, you must have every, every area of the field occupied by players, you know. Some formation will not give you that, that opportunity to cover those areas, but uh, we'll play with the back four, three midfielders and, uh, yeah, three strikers. We have a lot of good players in the league, but now we just have to focus on areas we, I think they can help us, you know. Uh, you can't overhaul uh, a team that uh, came out second in the last half come. So changes definitely will come, but uh, gradually. And so we'll see, look at the areas, maybe in the midfield, in the attack. Attack, we are, we are loaded in attack, you know, so we'll see, uh, maybe in defence. Those that are good, extraordinary players that we know can help us definitely will come in. So I'll move around the league and um, I'll watch a lot of games. Already I know, but now um, it's, it's not watching Aimba um, against um, um, Remo. It's watching players in Remo, 3SC, Aimba, Plato United. Uh, Canoe pillars and see those that we feel can really help us add value to what we want to do. Definitely, they will come on board. I'm only focused in um, what we can do in Nigeria. You know, they are African coaches. I am African coach. So, um, um, like you heard, the the president they will support me, and then that is what every coach will need. You know, so if we, I have that support. I think um, I don't have to look at what others are doing. It's just focus on uh, the players we have and how to improve the players and get the results. First of all, uh, Finidi George is our own. That means uh, indigenous coaches have won. You know, they've taken someone, uh, somebody from uh, the indigenous coach. That is something. Uh, let me just say we've won in that kind of uh, situation. So. That is something to be happy and that is why I'm here to support our indigenous coach, not a foreign coach. We have all the certificates the foreign coaches have, so why not indigenous coach? So uh, Fini the George is a friend and uh, is uh, well known all over the world, in Nigeria and all over the world. And uh, his capability, we are not doubting it. We know that he's going to deliver. That is why I'm here to appreciate uh, the NFF for appointing him. I will tell him definitely to look also inward, not only foreign players, to look on, uh, inside the, uh, the Nigerian league, so to take players also from there, to prepare our team for Chan, you know, and also for the national Super Eagles, you know, to put some hungry lions into the, inject hungry lions into the team. Consistency in uh, results. The Nigerian fan doesn't want to hear that Nigeria drew a game, whether it's against Brazil or, or, or France or England or Spain or whoever. They only want to win. There is nothing else they think about, right? So all they need is victory. But you can't win every day. Not even Brazil wins every day or Argentina, right? So the thing is, these next two games, I mean, you saw he handled two friendlies. We won one. Everybody was screaming to have it. Ah, he's very good. And then we lost one. And it was like that one we lost was a World Cup final. So um, we need those good results 
a lot more than we've been having it. The AFCON was good, but even as good as it was, immediately we lost. Everybody started looking at the limitations of uh, the tactics we played. So he said pressure will not put him under. And I like that. Pressure won't put him under. So definitely will be um, uh, uh, judged, or people start judging him instantly. We play South Africa. And then four days later, Bene follows. Good results in those two games are absolutely key to whatever else happens. He doesn't want to start with pressure, uh, with bad results in two games. Uh, you know, do his first two competitive games, he needs very good results there. And I uh, think that's what he will be judged on ultimately. Nigerian fans don't have that patience. I think he is a good choice. He's got all the qualifications, both as a player, both as a, a coach. He has um, enormous experience now, 20 months. is now is more than two years now he's been in, on the coaching setup, handled those two friendlies as a head honcho. So I think he's absolutely good enough for that job. Thank you for watching BMC TV. Please watch, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.